Hi, I'm Christine from Remake Scotland. Remake is a community reuse charity based in Creef in the beautiful heart of Scotland. We are there to support people to reuse materials for the benefit of the community and for the planet also. Um, this is the first in a series of videos in which we're going to try to demonstrate to you simple sewing skills that you can use to make your clothes last longer and to prevent them from ending up in landfill. Right, we're going to start by sewing a button on a shirt. All you need for this, needle and thread, a little pair of sharp scissors and of course the button. If you have lost the button, the chances are that you will find there's one on the inside of the garment somewhere. Don't have your thread too long, about 45 centimetres is plenty. And we're going to make a knot in the thread to start. Simply make a little loop, pass your needle through the loop once, twice, pull it tight and you have a knot. This will stop your thread slipping through the fabric. Now if, you, if the button has already has just come off as here, you can probably see the holes. So we're going to start by turning to the back and we're just going to take a tiny little stitch, pull it to the knot, take another little stitch just to secure the thread, turn it to the right side, place your button over the holes and we're ready to go. So bring your needle up. Sometimes it's a little difficult to find the hole. And we're just simply going to go up through the hole, down, and this is a four hole button. So we're going to go up through the other ones. Don't pull your thread too tight. Sometimes when you're a beginner, it's a little tricky to find the holes. But just take your time. And you want to go up and down about four or five times through each hole to make sure your button is nice and secure. Once you've done that on the last one, don't go right through the fabric, just go through the hole of the button. And then to secure your thread, just wind it two or three times round, take your thread through to the back, a couple of little stitches on top of each other, just really small stitches to secure it, cut your thread and you're done. Your button is sewn on nice and securely and it will not come off. So, so next we're going to sew a button on in a slightly different way. If you've lost a button from a jacket or a coat which has thick fabric, we have to use a slightly different technique. If you can see how there's a little gap between the button and the fabric there, that is so that the button will go through the buttonhole because we're dealing with a much thicker fabric. Right, so now we're going to sew a button onto a thicker fabric. You need to have a slightly different technique so that your button will go through its buttonhole. This time I'm using double thread, again, not too long. And again, I'm going to make a loop, pass the thread through twice, so that I have a little knot. Now, so we're going to use this fabric. I'm going to take my needle from the back, like we did before. Sorry. And I'm going to secure it with just a little stitch. Now, this time, when you're sewing on a button that needs a little bit of give for a thicker fabric, you do it as before, through one hole, down through the other. But this time, we want a little bit of a gap here. We don't want this to be really tight against the fabric. So I'm just going to stick my finger through there just to, so that I don't make it too tight. And as before, I can find the hole. We're going to go up and down. Now the reason I'm using thread double this time is because it's a thicker fabric. Um, it's probably on a coat or a jacket or something and it needs to be quite strong. So we're going to go up and down like we did before. But you can see how I've got my finger under there to stop it becoming too tight. If you can't find the hole, just flip it over and have a look.
Okay. Now, once we have the button securely on, again, like we did before, we're going to make a little wind round the neck. Take it back through the hole. But this time we're going to make a slightly bigger wind. So if you hold the fabric like that, you can just wind maybe, I don't know, eight or nine times. And you can see how we've created a kind of little neck there. As before, take the needle to the back of the fabric. couple of little stitches. That's too big. A couple of little stitches to finish off. This is what happens when you have double thread. It sometimes gets a bit tangly, but don't worry. And trim it off. Now, obviously, I have used a different coloured thread there so that you can see what I'm doing. But there you have your button nice and secure. And it has a little bit of a gap there so that you can get it into the buttonhole. Sometimes you'll have a button that doesn't have button holes but has a shank like this. Um, so it's just, it's very similar but it's a very slightly different technique to sew this one on. So once again, we've got our thread, we have it knotted at the end, and taking it through from the back, a couple of stitches to secure. And it doesn't matter if you do these stitches on the front or on the back, either will do fine. So this time you have to kind of hold the fabric flat, like that. And it's just exactly the same as before. I'm just going to take the thread through. Again, about, with the shank buttons, you probably need to do a little more. I would take it through maybe eight or nine times just to make sure it's completely secure. Hold the fabric up to check that it's sitting okay, which it is. Again, a couple of wraps, not many, just one or two. Take your needle through to the back. Sorry, my thread's got caught there. And a couple of stitches just to secure your thread. It's really important that you remember to do that because if you don't secure the thread, it's very easy for your button just to come off again. And then trim. And there we have. So if you lose a button off your jeans, it's a slightly different problem because buttons on jeans are not stitched on, but as you can see, are riveted on. So if you lose one, I'm sorry, but it's impossible to rivet one on again unless you have the equipment. You can, however, just sew one on like I did here. Sometimes there might be a little hole, you might have to do a few stitches to close the hole up, but it works perfectly well. It has the added advantage, of course, if your jeans are a little bit tight, you can sew the button on slightly near the edge. So now we've done the practical side of sewing on a button, but remember buttons can be beautiful as well as practical. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Here's a plain jacket, but look at those cool buttons. And there you can see these gorgeous handmade buttons. Um, and they're all different. Remember, you don't have to have every button the same on a garment. Here's a sweater. And again, I have just sewn a line of pretty little buttons there just to give it a bit of extra detail and, you know, a bit of balloon. Now, I'm a bag maker and I use a lot of buttons on my bags, um, sometimes really big chunky ones, and you can make a feature of that too. So here you can see I used a really chunky button on this bag with a contrasting thread. The button is not functional, it has a magnetic snap, but it really adds something. Here's a fantastic selection of buttons. Some are handmade, these ones for example, and these, some more commercial ones. None of them cost more than perhaps 50p. And you can, of course, harvest buttons from garments that you are definitely finished with. And you can also find them in charity shops.